I am spinning some stroll. La 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 la. What's the matter? You okay? Hi, welcome to Fiber Love Diary. I'm Trisha, if we haven't met, and if we have met, welcome back. This is one of the rare times since, I don't know, the middle of 2021 where I don't have polish on. So I hope nobody's too disappointed, but what are you gonna do? Welcome to 2022. It's exciting. I know there's a lot of big things coming in 2022. I'm excited. I hope you guys are excited. You probably can hear the TV up in the living room. Sorry if you can. Um, John is basically taking a nap. Some of you guys had questions. You don't know what's going on. I actually don't exactly know what's going on either because we both had COVID again. Yes, we did. To make a long story short, John visited his mom on the 29th and on the 30th, she was diagnosed with COVID. And then we were like, oh, we found out, that's the day we found out, the next day. He hadn't really seen anybody else. He had come straight home at the time that we found out. And so we have been quarantining since then. It was very lucky that, you know, we found out as early as we did and didn't get anyone else exposed at least on our parts. You know I've heard a lot of people getting upset about being exposed and blah 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 blah. I My feeling is that I don't really think that there are too many people out there who are being careless who, or who intentionally are exposing people and you know things just happen. Luther does not know what to think about Jessica. He's like, is it a person? Is it not a person? It doesn't want to hang out with me. He's so confused. But I thought I'd update you guys on what's going on. And actually on Thursday, I was down on the couch with a fever all day. I woke up and I was like, I have a fever. Immediately I knew because I had had those particular kind of dreams that some of us have when we have a fever. I had them. I woke up to them. I was like, I have a fever. So I went right in the bathroom, took my temperature. I was right. It lasted all day and I think maybe Friday night for a few minutes like just as I was going to bed but otherwise I'm on the mend for sure. I'm just coughing. My body's trying to get rid of whatever virus is left dead or alive. I mean I'm assuming it's dead by now but my body's just trying to get rid of that so I'm coughing a lot and that's what makes editing so great right? And I know I probably look pale on video but I mean it is winter in Michigan and basically we haven't seen the sun so this is what I look like you know what I'm saying I thought I'd update you guys on what I'm working on I am not spending as much time as I normally would crafting I'm spending a lot of time like just resting watching stupid videos online I know some of you are Carrie I'm talking to you while this has all been going on there has been some other family stuff happening it is stuff that I don't really feel like I should share because it's not my story to tell if it was all to do with me and really and John I would just like lay it all out there because I'm an open book and he's basically an open book sometimes he has to keep work things private but um, I would just tell everything but it isn't just our story and I don't want to put it out on public forums without everyone's permission blah 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 so there's other stuff going on that's like way more complicated um, I would say in extended family there is some pretty major stuff happening I appreciate all the good thoughts one or two of you have messaged me at moments where I guess you could argue it's good or bad stuff <laughs> it's good moment or a bad moment and have heard more than you probably even wanted to know about what's going on, it's been two of you. Sorry if you heard more than you wanted to. I have moments too where I'm like, I don't know what to do, what do I do? I still kind of feel that way, but um, I also feel like deep down, I know that I try to do the right thing and if other people can't see that, that's okay. Anyway. Let's get into what's been going on. John did some dyeing with me. I'm gonna kind of take you guys through that. But I've been working on some stuff. Um, I finished John's socks. Oh, here they are. During Vlogmas, I dyed a sock blank and then I, I knit John a pair of socks from it. And I thought I would just quick show you guys how cool they are. And also because the, the sock blank was hideous. I mean, they're ugly. And um, how perfectly they match when you do the, those double-stranded sock links. Look how close they are. 
and you know he's very happy he's been waiting to wear them until I showed you so those socks turned out really really nice they fit him perfectly I'm gonna probably do more of those I'm gonna dye some for my shop um, I actually have already knit the blanks I just haven't had a chance to dye them yet I have finished a couple other knitting projects I'm working on some like bigger projects so I finished a hat this is a hat that was requested by a friend I'll link the pattern below I don't know how to pronounce the name but I will link it below um, and I knit him one in like dark dark teal a few years ago and he just got engaged and asked if I would knit his betrothed a pink one to match so I did Ooh, I gotta make myself one of these look how cute this is I finished that it did take me a few days it's really not hard to do what happens and many of you probably figured this out is you knit this band um, and then attach it I attached it in pattern you do not have to you can really just do a mattress stitch but um, I attached it in pattern right about here it's pretty hard to see if you don't know what's there though it turned out cute I'm gonna do it again it's Malabrigo Rios I can't remember the colorway but there's only one that's like really pink like this that's going in the mail this week I've been waiting to film this and then we have a niece this isn't even blocked yet we have a a niece great niece technically but it's complicated who just had her third um little boy and i just finished this yesterday i was so sure i was gonna run out of yarn and technically i kind of did um i played yarn chicken with it and i don't even have every single end woven in yet but you gotta see this stinking adorable sweater so it's a Sir sirdar i don't know how to pronounce it sirdar pattern sirdar um, it needs buttons, it needs ends woven in, and it needs stuff, <laughs> and it needs um, blocking. But is that not the cutest little Grampy sweater you ever saw? This is the 6 to 12 month size, but look at this like little Grampy shawl collar. I'm sorry, I'm dying. It's so cute. Blocked, it's going to be gorgeous. So I just need to wash and block it and weave those ends in and get some buttons on. And that was some yarn chicken. I actually had to go um, two inches, or sorry, two rows narrower on the collar band because I came so close to running out of yarn. And I this time I actually had as much as the pattern called for. You guys know I like to play fast and loose with yarn quantities, but this time I was like, you must make sure you have enough. So I did, and then I came so close that I, I would not have finished had I not shortened up I don't know it's it's such a you have to do a special um row to add stitches so that it's a really stretchy on the outer edge and you've got to make sure you do all these things so I did shorten the collar up by two rows but that's not bad then I only have one other finished item that I'm going to just show you the spinning projects I'm working on and one of them I want to make sure I talk to you a little bit about and the and the dyeing so first of all I finished <laughs> this is going to freak Luther out I'll explain it when I do it so for some reason dolls freak him out because I think he realizes that they represent a human but they are definitely not human because they don't move and try to pet him and try to have a relationship with him so he's freaked out by dolls <laughs> you're gonna see it just want to tell you ahead of time I finished um I finished that dress for Jessica the day after Christmas do you love her do you want to give her kisses do you love her give her kisses He doesn't know what to think. So if you don't know, Jessica was my first friend. I've had her since I was like three, which would have been 1977. My, I think my mom bought her, I'm pretty sure. And when I was five, my mom taught me to sew by making dresses for her um, that I brought into kindergarten for show and tell. That part I all remember, like she was my best friend. She slept with me every single night. I love her. I could not find her clothes. I'm pretty sure my sister got them in a box full of Barbie clothes like many years ago and it doesn't matter anyways. I showed her on my, um, on a live. <laughs> You've got to see this dress also. I showed her on a live. I'll explain these also in a minute. Um, during Tour de Fleece, because I really wanted to make clothes for her and Cindy McBride found the pattern that my mom and I used 
back in 1979 when I was five to make clothes for her on Etsy. So I bought it, but I bought it in the wrong size. And that is why she has these clips in the back holding it, making the dress fit a little bit better because it's just a tiny bit too big. But is this not the cutest Christmas dress in the whole wide world? And yes, I know I'm weird for wanting to make doll clothes, but oh my goodness. Like this has been such a fun thing since I did this as a kid as well. She has the little matching bloomers to cover her diaper. And it's just the most precious thing ever, this dress. I'm like dying. So I'm going to make her a spring dress. I have material already. Um, and I didn't cut it out yet because I found the correct size and I was waiting for it to get here. It's here. I'm going to cut out a spring dress for the correct size. I'm considering maybe even a Valentine dress, but I might be late again. So anyway, I let my mom know that I was doing this. I was like, hey, we were talking about something else. And I, I think I sent her a picture and she was like, she actually said the sewing was good. I don't really consider myself a great seamstress. I mean, I know what I'm doing. I've been sewing forever but I don't really love it. And I don't really consider myself super great at it. So when she said the sewing looked really good, I was like, yes, cause my mom really can sew. She sent me this that she had, she thinks my great, great grandmother made it. And she was hoping that it would fit Jessica. Check this out. So it's corduroy. The inside is, you can see the inside is like all hand. The lining is all hand sewn in. Don't worry, I'm not gonna start regular sewing on this channel. And it's it's so old that it's like disintegrating in spots. This is not turning into a sewing channel, I promise. But isn't that so, so cute? It doesn't quite fit her because her hands are kind of like open and they won't go into the sleeves. I don't think it was meant for a doll her shape, if that makes sense. I thought I could hang it up next to her. Isn't that so cute? Oh my. And you really wouldn't, know that it doesn't fit her because it kind of looks like it would fit her but it just doesn't quite go over her hands so let me take you guys through the spinning I think I'm gonna actually take you down and like film what I'm working on a little bit okay so if you come to the lives a lot of you have seen me start this yak silk blend I was struggling drafting it and really like frustrated and I was like this is not very fun to spin because the drafting is so awkward mainly because silk is like such a longer fiber than yak and so I was struggling with it and having a lot of trouble. So at that point I decided to start trying to spin it from the fold instead and it is like way easier and it looks so much better. Spinning it from the fold has been a lot better on drafting, but um, because of the length difference, I end up with a, like some yak at the ends that doesn't get pulled in. I don't know if I can explain it, I'll show you. Because it will make sense to some of you, and for some of you, maybe you'll learn. So when I spin from the fold, I don't put my finger in the middle. I spin like this. And so what happens is it's pulling your fibers, it's folded in half, from here and because the yak fibers are a lot shorter some of them end up down in here and not getting pulled up and so I end up with just a few little yak fibers at the bottom but I mean I just spin them in and then grab my next one and keep going but it has worked much better so it's just a little tip we actually talked about it back in August when I was spinning the paradise mulberry brick I think it was mulberry brick it was silk brick we talked about it back then I was not having trouble drafting that but that would have been my first like go-to if I was so the reason why I showed that that is that I really want to hurry up and get this done because John got me a woolly winder for my match list for Christmas and it's not a jumbo it's a normal size which I did tell him that if I got one that's what I would want is not a jumbo I already have two jumbos anyway so if I want to ply on a jumbo I can do that either on my Hanson or my Ashford I wanted one that would go with the like really faster speed I can't wait to get it on there, but I don't want to put it on until I finish spinning the singles for this. I just want to continue spinning them with the same setup. And it probably wouldn't matter, but in my mind, it's like, 
don't change what's working. I will actually link my Instagram post. The other thing I'm spinning is on my minstrel. I'm spinning some stroll roving from Knit Picks that I dyed, oh gosh, I don't know, when did I dye this? A while ago. And this is the last um, section. I'm doing a three ply, so I have split it into three sections. This is the last one and I'm about to start it. That's another project that I'm working on. I posted a picture of the first bobbin on Instagram. I will link you to that post. And let's get into the dyeing. Hello, hello, it's Monday morning. These are John's too. Check them out. Is he talented or what? Honest to goodness, he really is. And then here's the rest. This is Mineral Springs. This is Amore. And this one is Koi Pond. This. I'm gonna try and get in close in a few spots so you can really see the fire star. John's two are called Deep Water and Clown Car. And you guys always ask when I dye fiber, like how come, Can we, I hope we get to see it finished. This is it finished. So pretty, right? So that's everything that got dyed during the week that we were sick with COVID. And again, I can't post it or get it out of here until we are through our quarantine period. We know all the little anything is dead and we're not completely through it yet. So it'll be posted soon. And I am just so glad to be back with you guys. I plan to be live on Sunday. I did not do a live this last Sunday because I was afraid I couldn't get it through it without coughing a ton. Laughing and talking makes me cough more. So I figured I would wait till next week, but there's a lot of fun coming in 2022. I'd love to hear what gifts you got for Christmas. Maybe they're fiber related. Maybe you're just excited about them. So if you want to tell me about them, let's talk about it. And then also I would love to hear, um, do you have goals for yourself in your hobbies, your crafts, whatever for 2022? I don't really do that generally. Last year I made a vision board and like 95% of it happened. Is that a lot? I don't really know. Um, I did not make one for 2022 yet, but I kind of don't feel like that one day that, um, you know, December 31st is the only time when you can have a vision for what's coming up next for you. I feel like I could make a vision board any day that I want to. It doesn't need to be the 1st of January or whatever. Um, I feel great about how that vision board went. It, it makes so much sense that if you're looking at your goals on a pretty 
daily basis like maybe not every single day but if a few times a week you are taking those goals in again you keep working towards them not even consciously all the time so what would be on your vision board for your hobbies or your crafts or your life what's on your board what would you like to accomplish this year what do you want to learn about what do you want to do i really want to let the creativity stream take me where it takes me this year i just want to let let things grow naturally let things change over time naturally this year instead of trying to push myself into a future mold that I think I should be in. I think that for me a lot of times I do that to myself and then I beat myself up if I don't end up where I thought I should be but I still end up where I was supposed to be. It's so hard to explain but I think some of you guys will understand this and that it's not good for me to do that. So that's really my goal this year is to continue to grow, continue to, um, like I said, follow the river of creativity and where it takes me without trying to like form it and force it and push it and all those things and um, end up where I'm supposed to be. So, and hopefully you guys will come along for the ride. I would love it. I am excited for 2022. I hope you are too. I'm sorry I've been MIA, but I did need the break and then we got sick. And I hope you guys are having a great 2022 so far. I will see you, I'll see you Sunday for the live and then a video next week. Thanks, I love you, bye.